so when you're in your camera uh, use your face just go to more and there's this pro one if you click to the pro uh, this will basically allow you to take raw images but you need to set up first from picture formats and make sure that raw copies are selected and I will also I also want to use my zoom lens and this is the constellation Orion that I already aligned and the thing you need to do is the checking the shutter speed and also your ISO I'm gonna set it up for 640 I don't want to go too crazy with the ISO by the way, I don't want to press the shutter button because I don't want to shake the camera so I set the voice controlling uh, on on my phone and I can say just cheese and it will take the picture for 30 seconds. This is called long exposuring. It basically allows you to open your sensor and leave it open for 30 seconds so it will absorb all the light okay, let's see okay as you can see when you zoom in you can see the star trails these are called star trails because earth is slowly rotating and moving and things are not stable so it looks like a line instead of a round shaped stars I want to increase my ISO to 1600 and put my uh, shutter speed to 8 let's try this way cheese That's better. I think 8 seconds is the sweet spot of the, the zoom lens of this uh, camera, which is the zoom lens is 70 millimeter. So in the 70 millimeter, I can exposure for 5 to 8 seconds, I can say. I will take a couple more exposure of the same exact same shot, maybe 10. There's also this app basically presses your uh, shutter button. Uh, I will show with you how that thing works. Press this one. You show where the shutter button is. And you set up your settings. Like I have my ISO 1600, eight seconds exposuring, everything is ready and press start. And it will automatically press the button for you every eight seconds so after taking 20 pictures every uh, picture was eight seconds as you can see the Orion is a little moved because of the Earth's rotation and I'm gonna realign a little bit better just like the before, open the app and press start, two, one, there you go. So I will take another 20 pictures. Sequator is a free stacking software only for Windows. There are also other stacking apps for Mac computers too. I will add their download links in the description below. 
There are tons of free tutorials on YouTube about using these softwares if you need to go into more details and learn more about them. And another important software is Adobe Photoshop that you can download for free 30 days trial from their official website. I'm starting with opening the Sequator app and finding my images. I ended up taking almost 200 pictures by realigning my target every 20 pictures. Select all and click open. Double click output to name and locate where your final file will be saved. Your final file will be a huge TIFF file. You are free to try out all these different settings and choose which one works best for you. Stacking is just done and I opened the stack TIFF file with Photoshop for level stretching. And I can see the flame nebula here. It's pretty impressive to have this details with phone camera. I will go and rotate my image first. When you open the level window, you will realize that histogram is showing all the stored information is in this light gray area. All we need to do is stretching that light data as much as possible without losing any quality. I will apply the level stretching continuously. And by the way, the shortcut for the level window is Command L on Macs or Control L on Windows, which will make you work more efficient and fast if you use those shortcuts. From the same level window, you can also reach your red and green light levels that you can adjust and balance it better. And always remember that I took and stacked only 200 pictures without any calibration frames taken in a Bortle 5 location with light polluted sky. Next time I will try this phone camera in a location with no light pollution at all and capture 1000 frames instead of 200 with including calibration frames to get more details and quality. I just can't believe I can now take pictures of deep sky objects with a phone camera without using a star tracker. I didn't go into too much details about what are the calibration frames and I'm planning to make a detailed video about them soon. Uh, calibration frames are basically helping with the noise and vignetting when you're stacking all the pictures. Uh, they are extra images need to be taken while you're in the field capturing the dark sky because the heat creates noise so when you're in the field you're taking pictures and your sensor creates some noise pattern that is actually different when you come home so you can't take calibration frames when you're at home you have to be in the field and it needs to be done in the same time while you're taking your original pictures Press Command and M or Control M on Windows for uh, the Curves window. If you take flat calibration frames and dark calibration frames, you don't have to deal with bad vignetting and the noise, like I said before. I honestly wasn't expecting a phone camera can take pictures of deep sky objects like this so I didn't even try taking calibration frames when I was stacking the pictures so I have a 
pretty horrible vignetting surrounding the edges but next time I will definitely take my calibration frames I will also add some uh, simple details in the description about how to take calibration frames I can clearly see the flame in Orion Nebula but I'm trying to pull more details with camera raw filter I am pretty impressed by the Samsung's new Galaxy S22 I also have a Galaxy Note before um, and these phones are allowing you the exposure for 30 seconds when you go into the pro mode you don't need an additional app it's the, the regular camera app and most of the androids are same if you go to pro mode you can exposure for 30 seconds for each camera in the back and I used to use this feature for long exposure time lapses when I'm camping or shooting in the field um, in the dark and I, actually you can see all those time lapses all over my videos I use them all the time and they're all taking with Galaxy S22, Galaxy Note 20, uh, I also have a Pixel 3a, they also do long exposure too, but again, this is the first time I'm using a phone zoom lens to capture a deep sky object, and it's pretty good that even with light pollution pollutioning around this is a really good result I can't imagine if I put this phone on a tracker with a complete dark sky it would and taking 1000 pictures it would definitely give me more details definitely and I will definitely try in the future I think the whole process simply is that you can go and do more on Photoshop with the details like there's a satellite that I can see that I want to get rid of like there are a lot of things that I need to reduce the highlights maybe but again I didn't go too much detail to confuse you if you're a beginner um, this is basically how the level stretching works, how stacking works. Um, every deep sky object will be different. So using the space, you can capture uh, and stack other nebulas and deep sky objects too.